This is part 14 of Entity Framework Tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the feature of conditional mapping in Entity Framework with database first approach. Let's understand what conditional mapping can do with an example. We'll be using this employees table for this demo. Is terminated column within this table is used to determine if an employee is a terminated employee or not. Now let's say in the application that we are developing, we always need only the employees who are not terminated. If that's the case, then in the query, we'll always have to include the filter across our entire application. Conditional mapping in Entity Framework can be used to apply such a permanent filter on the entity itself so that the generated SQL query will always have the WHERE clause. Let's see how to achieve this. Obviously, the first step here is to create the employees table itself, which I have already done. And here is the SQL script that can do it. I'll have the script available on my blog in case you need it. Now let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have an empty ASP.NET web application project. I have already installed the ADO.NET Entity Framework. Now the first step here is to add a new item to this project and that's going to be the ADO.NET Entity Data Model. And let's give this model a meaningful name. Let's call it Employee Model. And we want to generate our model from the database. So select that option, click Next. Give the connection string a meaningful name. Let's call this Employee DB Context click next. This is going to connect to the database and retrieve all the tables, views and stored procedures. So let's go ahead and select the employees table and give this model namespace a meaningful name and click finish. So this should generate the employee model for us based on that employees table. Now I have already added a web form to this project and if you notice what I have done so far is dragged and dropped a grid view control. Now let's flip this to the design mode and auto format this and choose this colorful scheme and then within the code behind file let's create an instance of employee db context so employee db context equals new employee db context and employees property should return all the employees which we are going to set as the data source for our grid view control and then let's invoke the data bind method. All right, before we run this web form, let's actually flip to SQL Server Management Studio, fire up SQL Profiler, and then let's run a new trace. All right, so the trace is running now. Let's go ahead and run our web form. So now all the employees will be uh, loaded, you know, both terminated and the employees who are not terminated. So we have seven employees in the database and all of them are displayed here. And if you look at the SQL trace that's running, look at the query that is generated. You know, we don't have a WHERE clause here. All the columns are basically selected from that employees table. Now let's say in our application, we are not really bothered about terminated employees. Uh, there's no need for them to load into the application, uh, you know. Um, if that's the case, you know, it's very easy to load the employees uh, who are not terminated. What we can do is here, we can use a WHERE clause and say WHERE employee such that employee dot is terminated equals false. So now what is this going to do? This is going to return only the employees who are not terminated. So let's go ahead and run this once more. And then look at this. Now we only got, you know, the employees who are not terminated. And if you look at SQL profiler here, look at this, there is a where clause here, you know, where is terminated equals zero. Okay. So, but, you know, let's say I have another page, uh, you know, where I need to load employees who are not terminated. Then there also I have to include this uh, where method. OK, so in our entire application, wherever, you know, we need to load employees every time we have to include that where method. Now, instead of this, we can use the feature of conditional mapping in Entity Framework to apply a permanent filter on the entity itself so that, you know, the Entity Framework is automatically going to include that where clause in the generated SQL. Let's see how to achieve that. So to use conditional mapping, you know, first right click on the entity and select table mapping option and then we specify um, our condition. Okay, so let's go to the ADO.NET Entity Model Designer. 
right click on the entity select table mapping and look at this we have an option here to add a condition so I'm going to select here is terminated and look at this I'm going to say when is terminated equals false okay now if you want to compare against null values then you have another operator here is uh, when you select that you have two options you know whether the column values is null or not null here we always have something populated within the database table for that column um, so I'm going to use equal to operator instead of null so equal to false okay now at this point if I build the solution look at this I have a, an, uh, an error and similarly even if I validate the model we will still have the same error so when uh, we build a validate after adding this condition we have this error and why is that that's basically because a table column in this case is terminated table column is mapped more than once we have mapped it in this conditional mapping here as well as in this property mapping here okay so we cannot actually map uh, you know a table column more than once and that's why we get that error you know the error is the same thing problem in mapping fragments starting at that line uh, member is terminated so that is the column uh, which is throwing that error okay so to get rid of that error all we need to do is delete that property from the entity now let's build the solution notice that Um, okay does not contain a definition for is terminated look at that why do we have that error that's basically because if you look at the where clause you know we removed is terminated property from the employee entity that's the reason why we have that error so let's get rid of that condition from there and then now let's build the solution so build succeeded and similarly if we go ahead and validate the model so validation completed okay now let's go ahead and run our web form one the SQL trace is still running and notice that we only have the employees who are not terminated and if you look at SQL profiler here look at that you know we have all the columns except the is terminated column because we removed that from the entity and then look at the where clause there is a where clause so this where clause is going to ensure that only the employees who are not terminated are loaded now there is no need for us to include you know that where clause manually you know in all the places where we are loading employees that's automatically generated for us uh, you know with that conditional mapping That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.